Hello my beautiful people, welcome to the first ever uh, intro, well it's not really an intro video, this is to kind of give you uh, an understanding and an insight as to what the clearing cohort is all about. So I have designed this and many of you are probably asking first of all, you know, you've been hearing about this for a while, what the hell is it all about? Uh, a lot of you have probably been thinking, what the hell is a cohort? Well, a cohort is a company, a group of people, a collective or community of like-minded uh, people, students that all have a common goal or destination nation in mind. Uh, so with that said, uh, I'm going to get into what this is all about and hopefully this will give you, I just want you to think of this video as like a little taster and I mean just a taster of what I will be giving you when you sign up for the clearing cohort. All right, so this clearing cohort, the first one, I wanted to start with like a really juicy subject. So I started with fear. So as you know, I'm an Aquarius sun. So I thought, you know what, why not shake it up a little bit? It's a new year. It's a new vibration. So we're going to jump straight in. So in terms of this, um, the word the, the word fear in its official Oxford dictionary meaning is it's a noun, right? A distressing emotion aroused by impending danger, evil, pain, and the like. Uh, whether the threat is real or imagined, the feeling or condition of being afraid, a specific instance of our propensity for such a feeling as such an abnormal fear of heights, right? So we can have multiple fears, many fears of, of various different things. Now, when you hear of it explained that way, it's really easy to kind of just dismiss it as a condition of the mind, right? But for, for in truth, for those of you that have known pain, trauma, uh, that have been at the hands of evil, right? And I don't use that word lightly. It's a very heavy word and for a specific reason you know that fear and when you are afraid or deeply afraid of something, it's a very real experience, right? How we experience it is very real. Uh, when it grips us, fear can be debilitating and it can show up in all kinds of ways. Anxiety, uh, being frozen on the spot, sweating, screaming, anger, nervous laughter, uh, you know, it can make us run away, it can make us cower, it can make us cry, it can make us shut down, it can make us break down. Every time you have an experience like this, you effectively tie a knot in your energy system. Now hold on to that idea as we progress further and forward. In short, fear isn't just a life ruiner, it's also a dream killer, right? You've met people that are like this, you know, people that are naysayers and stuff and they shoot down your dreams. Very often we do that to ourselves from the inside out of fear, right? So how many wonderful ideas and inventions have you had, have you come up with, and for the sake of fear, you've kind of just stopped yourself from going after it or pursuing it, right? Through the fear of what others will say, the fear of what your family will think, the fear of what your friends will do. There's a lot of, there are many fears, truthfully, right? And they can run adjacent to what we call phobias. But a fear is not a phobia, and the difference between these two things is the intensity, right? A, a phobia is something that just, you know, your, your mind really shuts off. Whereas a fear, often our fears are learned by us uh, or trained into us to keep us safe. Now, when you think of it in this way, fear is, uh, as one of my favourite authors uh, speaks about fear is the uh, it's the raven or the crow on your shoulder that says slow down when you're driving and then a car comes hurtling around the corner or you turn the corner and there's a pedestrian standing there right or just steps into the road fear is what stops you walking close to uh, a ledge of a great height right it reminds you that uh, you know that as you are even though you're not as breakable as you fear, you're also not indestructible, right? Like there is a mechanism within us that's always trying to keep us safe. The problem with fear is it will kill your dreams, right? It will keep you safe and safe, too safe, is effectively the, the realm of mediocrity. You were built to live. You were built to create. 
you were built to explore and to expand right now before we continue any further i do want to say uh, i am not saying this in terms of oh there's something wrong with you so you should buy this product there's nothing wrong with you right the fact that you are here and functioning and living out in the world means that you have purpose even if you haven't figured out what that is right you are perfectly whole and complete in and of yourself regardless of what anybody tells you now for many of you, if you've been with me long enough, you know I am a passionate advocate of people changing their lives for, and I have been for as long as I've been creating content, I've always tried to like sneak that stuff in there because I myself have been through that process, right? You also know that I am deeply passionate about energy work. I've been doing this for a long time now. I started, you know, my journey as a, a, a baby spiritual person stepping onto that path that God 21 years old for my first ever Reiki course. Um, what you all what, what you all know me for really is tarot. And as I've evolved on my path, I've begun to combine all of my skills into what I consider a stream of support for my clients. This cohort, the clearing cohort, is a continuation of that. I no longer want to just read for people and tell them what's happening. I want to be an active part uh, and an active encouraging factor to support them in transcending their own crap. Why? Because I know it can be done. I've done this for myself. I've done this for countless clients and I'm very, very proud. I'm very happy that I get to facilitate this kind of work for people. Now, um, welcome to the first ever clearing cohort, right? So let's get into what it really is all about. Now, in uh, Jewish mysticism, also known as Kabbalah, uh, there is a, a practice called gematria, right? And whereby you convert a word into a numerical value, right? So the interesting thing about the word fear, it equates to uh, F-E-A-R, right? So F equals six, uh, E equals five, A equals one, R equals nine. Right, so when we combine these words and we do the calculation and we simplify it, it actually equates to the number three. Now, in numerology, the number three equates to communication, conversation, hold on to that word, it's going to be important in a moment, self-expression, openness, social connection, fun, pleasure and beauty. So you're probably thinking, okay, so what does this have to do with fear? Well, think about how many of those things you stop yourself from doing, having, being, or experiencing because you are afraid. And suddenly you start to understand this from a very different perspective. Well, fear is often an echo, right? It's a mental construct that happens as a conversation within the self to stop yourself from enjoying life, having fun, pursuing beauty, speaking up, asking questions, expressing yourself. Very often it's a conversation that happens within us and then promptly shuts down whatever path or desire we thought we might dare to explore, right? Well, I'm here to say personally, and if you know me well enough, you know that I have a potty mouth, fuck that right? We are not here for that. We are here to live. We are here to grow. We are here to create. We are here to explore. We are here to expand, right? And that's what the Clearing Cohort really is about, about giving you the tools to move forward. Now, having done a lot, of, begun doing a lot of deeper work on and for myself and exploring ways in, you know, or exploring things in new ways as an Aquarius sun, uh, you know I am somewhat of a mad scientist with all of this stuff, and I love that about me, and I love it for me as well, right? Um, by creating the clearing cohort, I've created a virtual, and it's virtual for now, eventually this will be in person, and I can't wait, a uh, place for dedicated souls who really are about this work and who are ready to show up for themselves and therefore the world in a greater capacity. Now, when you empower yourself, and we all know this to be true, when you empower yourself you tra and you transcend your own fears and your own bullshit, quite frankly, you provide an example for those around you, right? Now, if you've got children, if you've got loved ones, if you've got friends, if you've got employees, these are the kinds of impacts that you can make, right? Can you imagine how great doing this kind of self-work is going to be? Imagine being that leading example. What I really want to do here is create a safe, cohesive and amplified space 
not only for not only to clear the stuff around uh, this month's theme, right? Which this month, as you know now, is fear. I also wanted to take those dedicated souls out and committed to really expanding their lives on a true journey of transformative connection with themselves, right? This is about you getting to know you on a much deeper level. And when we know ourselves at such a deep level, that's how we become what I like to call unfuckwithable, right? That's how you do it, by truly getting to know what turns you on, what switches you off, what shuts you down, how it's doing it, where it comes from, what person, what experience really did this for you? Now, depending on your life path number, you will work like you'll be able to work with three energy, more or less, better or worse, according to how your number plays with it. Then there's other factors like your name number, right? How you process fear, what it does for you, what it's and how it sort of how you treat it and it treats you. It's going to be different for all of us, right? We're all human beings, we're all individual, and that's the beauty of the world. But in truth, fear isn't just a thought or a state, it's also an emotion, an energy in motion, an emotion, right? All of that to say, it's a frequency, which is one of the reasons I bought out the New Year New Frequency product, right? We're stepping into a whole new frequency of energy. For those of you that follow the feng shui and Chinese metaphysical system, you'll know we're about to enter period nine. We're now in the uh, universal year eight that is uh, numerolog numerologically the, the universal year. Um, this is a big deal, right? Energy, frequency, and vibration are going to be huge areas of development. Mark my words, I talked about this a lot in the Universal Year 8 video, you can check that out. It's up there and on my channel, it's totally free. In a Universal Year 8, everything is amplified, including external attempts at heightening your fear right? So why not take advantage and actively work with your own ideas, your own energies, your own numbers, your own chart to really explore what might be possible if you understand how fear shows up for you, what it does to you and how you can overcome it, uh, you, you know, the inside job that it's been doing effectively for you for far too long, right? So if you're a life path one, you might fear routine, structure and requirements of holding to a task long after you lose the interest for it. I'm a life path one, uh, right? If you're a life path two, you may fear uh, to jump in, uh, you know, and to tread and riding waves of change. That might really sort of off foot you and, and get you kind of like, you know, in your feels about the whole thing. If you're a life path three, you might fear being held down by the responsibilities of life and have people count on you in some way. If you're a life path four, maybe uh, being isolated or removed from the facts that you so desperately crave. If you're a life path five, uh, you might fear the power and control dynamics of the world and interpersonal connections. If you are a life path six, uh, you know, you might fear things that come to a close or where you are no longer needed. Right, that can be very scary for a six person. Uh, if you're a life path seven, you might fear needing to be the point person up front and center, out there in the world, in front of everybody. If you are a life path eight, you might fear the pull of spirituality on your material desires. Oh, well, if, I, if you know, I'm going to be really spiritual, then I guess I can't have anything material. No, I'm not sure that's, that's the case, but you know. For uh, those of you that are life path nines, you might fear appearing the alien and often feel like that. Uh, if you're a life path 11, you might fear having to play the human game and sell your ideas to really actually do the grunt work and be a part of the world as opposed to floating around in this lofty escapist space. If you're a life path 22, you might fear the requirement of having to work behind the scenes and succeed quietly. If you're a life path 33, you might fear the knowledge that once it's all done, there might actually be nothing at the end of all of this. All right, there's a really deep, profound fears and that's just, scra just scratching the surface. Now, those precious few who decide to take on this journey with me will be delving into their numbers with numerology. They'll be getting a look at how that shows up and what the considerations might be. 
all in this, uh, and obviously in this very small, very exclusive group of people who are truly dedicated to doing the work. It's going to be a very deep, very powerful, and even intimate experience. And what I mean by that is there are only going to be eight of you. I'm only taking eight people for this, and there is a very specific reason for that that I will be explaining to the cohort themselves. That's just one layer, right? If you've been with me long enough and you've heard me say astrology, tarot, numerology, energy work, these are all different layers. They're all different slices of the pie. This is really just to uh, a place to discover something deeper than you have, you know, for a lot of you maybe ever gone before. It's not for the faint of heart, I'll tell you that, right? I'm really going to take you through this journey. Uh, will it be exploring certain aspects of your chart as well in terms of your astrology? I want to facilitate real change for people and true se- and a true sense of transcendence. That's why the spaces are so limited because I am going to be doing a lot of work behind the scenes for all of you before the event even starts, right? You'll be getting a whole bunch of information from me and then on the day itself, there's going to be like... Uh, it's going to be between four and five hours where we really dig into all of this, uh, not to mention all the energy work that I have lined up for you. Now, in terms of the astrology of it all, we know, right, the eighth house is the house of fear and crisis and trauma and all of that stuff. But there's a lot more to consider here than just this in, you know, in this part we will be exploring, but there's more to it than just this. So if you're an Aries, loosely speaking, of course, um, secrets, death of the ego, these could be fears for you. If you're a Taurus, adventure, having to break out of that routine, right, to do something completely different. Gemini, structure, right, like the immutable air sign, structure, oh my gosh, no, kill me now, (laughs) all right. Uh, Cancer, this could be all about the future. For Leo, it could be the past. For Virgo, this could be leadership. Libra, it could be tradition. Scorpio, open communication. Sagittarius, routine, right? Capricorn, showmanship. Aquarius, the minutia, right? Having to think about the small, small detail. Pisces, conflict resolution. Now, this is, of course, just a very small snippet. There's so much more to say and so much more for me to unpack. And as I said, you know, those that sign up will be getting a whole bunch of information about themselves that they can use. You know me, if you've been with me long enough, you know I like to keep it short, sweet. Uh, Well, not short, but I like to keep it practical. Can you use this on an everyday level? Because if you can't, what is the point, right? Now, but with the release of this video, The Clearing Cohort is born, uh, and there will be one every single month, each with a different theme. This is a big one. I wanted to start with a really juicy subject, uh, as I said, right? The price for each Clearing Cohort is going to be £225. It will be around a four to five hour session. There are only eight spaces in line with the numerology of the year and a few other things that I'll be sharing with the cohort itself. Um, The first one is going to take place on the 28th of January at 9 a.m. UK time. So a few things to note here. If you're not able to be on camera and present to do the work, this session is not for you. Uh, If you liked this video as an exploration, Imagine how much you're going to love the cohort, right? The link is to this course, uh, to this short, uh, well, it's not really a course, it's a session, uh, to spend that time with me and seven other wonderful souls. I look forward to being of service to you and for you. Uh, And if you think that the clearing cohort is for you, it would be lovely to have you. Uh, Take care and I'll see you soon. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video. And if you're excited to hear more about uh, different themes as the, the year progresses, take care and I'll see you soon.